More than 90% of all reported alien abductees are American. It's a statistic that skeptics use to argue that the abduction phenomenon is simply a product of our own pop culture and pop psychology. Abduction experts counter that the numbers are skewed because abductees in other countries don't always feel free to come forward. That was certainly the case for an Australian family who were forced underground after their experience was ridiculed in the press. On the afternoon of January 20th, 1988, Faye Knowles and her three sons set out from Perth in Western Australia to visit relatives several hundred miles away. At dusk, they were crossing the Null Arbor Plain, a desolate stretch of road through the Australian desert. It was here, as day turned to night, that the Knowles encountered something terrifying that remains unexplained to this day. We drove on, and this object kept on following us, and somehow, I don't know how the hell it done it, but it wasn't actually flying, it was just hovering. It, it didn't have wings or anything like that, it was just hovering. We nearly died. We thought we were dying. And the faster we went, the faster this object went. The Knowles had experienced abject fear at the hands of an unnatural force. Police offered no explanation. And when the family turned to the media for help in finding an answer, the media turned on them. Would you please welcome a couple of people who've seen the light, Faye and Patrick Knowles. Uh, what was your first reaction? I thought we were going to die, you know. Did you know what it was? Didn't know. It didn't look like anything you'd ever seen no, before? No, that's right. The object picked the car up and uh, Mum went under her window and put a hand out in the roof and uh, so you've, <laughs> so she you, touched it. Right, you've been picked up by an alien craft and you've wound down the window, Faye, yeah, and God. put your hand on the roof. Because I was curious to see what was up there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're way off the ground, you've got the alien spacecraft picking you up and you've, you've virtually patted it, haven't you? As this was going on, it was like a, uh, a really loud sound on top of the inside the car and the uh there was like a material like a, uh it was like a fog that was coming into the car and uh when the material came into your mum's skin burning <laughs> <laughs> and um the media treating the knolls family was ruthless i don't think one person honestly asked sensible questions and tried to console these people in the, and seeing the state of anxiety that they were in. I mean, people would say, oh, you know, you, you saw things, you're making it up. It's, it's, uh... That's not true. A lot of the interviewers, I find and have found, um, make a bit of a joke of it and uh, don't really approach it seriously. Some straining due to soot from outer space, others straining due to terrified passengers. <laughs> the impression I got... Um, on the Knowles case that it was a serious and uh, definite event that happened, experience that they had. Here, for the first time outside of Australia, and without reprisal or ridicule, is the story of what happened on that January night in 1988, as told by the Knowles in their own words. I was next to Sean, he was sitting in front, driving, and I was asleep in the passenger side, and uh, Sean goes, Pat, wake up, look at this. And he goes, and I go to him, what's the matter? He goes, it looks like a UFO, and I said, can't I shrink? We drove up to it, approaching it, and this thing was... At first, it was just stopped in the road, and uh, we approached it. Yeah, it was more like an egg shape. And it had, like, a yellow centre. Next minute, you know, this object appeared back behind us, and I said to Sean, come put your foot down, let's get going. And that's when I decided to put my foot down and it just caught up within a matter of seconds. Sparks hit the back tyre like something was trying to blow out the tyre like the object behind us. It blew the tyre out with like a beam of light. Before we know it, she just went clunk on the roof of the car. It um, jumped on the roof of our car and took us up in the air like that. And as it picked the car up, the car lit up like a microwave. It lit up really bright inside. We heard this great big enormous sound, it sounded like a motor or something, I don't know what. It gets really hard to describe, like, it made us feel like our heads were going to explode. Yeah, we're well, front and... Like, our brain's been sucked out. Yeah, it was hot. All this junk come inside the car and... You know... And at that time... It was hard to explain because I, I kind of uh, blanked out. As the car was dropped, you could feel this object. 
object slipped slip off the car. Not long after, you know, it dropped the car. That's when I come out of it. And I took off from the car. I told them all to jump out. We jumped at the car, ran up to bushes, hid in the bushes, and you could see this thing. It was still looking for us. And at the same time, I turned the lights off in the car, and somehow it could not focus on that car. Somehow it, it was working with our lights. As soon as I turned those lights off, it just could not find us. According to the Knowles family, it was at this point that they experienced what ufologists referred to as missing time. I think we lost about an hour and a half in time. And it's really hard to explain, you know, how long it did take. Local police investigated the incident and found several eyewitnesses who corroborated the strange events on the Null Arbor Plain that night. They were traveling along the road. A bright light appeared in front of the car. Shortly after, the, uh, the light disappeared behind the car. The car was picked up on the road, shaken violently. The car was covered in ash, black ash. What about the people? Were they harmed at all? Weren't harmed, but visibly shaken up. Many people witnessed the Knowles event, and uh, they were from all professions and walks of life, and, and they were travelling in different vehicles. So we had uh, people in spotter planes for the tuna boat uh, people. We had the tuna boat people uh, experiencing the UFO uh, light above them. Police investigators and scientists examined the car and analysed the sooty residue found inside. Although their findings were inconclusive, most of the investigators insisted the damage to the vehicle and the tires was caused by some unexplained but natural causes. A lot of the powers that be um, put it down to the rising sun uh, or Jupiter or uh, these other things which um, they think ordinary people mistake, mistake these things for, but um, it's their way of uh, getting around it and not having to do anything about it, I think. We just want uh, people to know what happened to us and that we weren't out for anything, you know, we just, we thought it was amazing ourselves. We thought we'd like to let people know what happened because it's, to us, you know, it's, it, it was exciting plus very frightening, you know, you can't really explain what it's like unless it's actually happened to you, like people say, you know, people used to laugh before and make a joke, but now they don't. Since the Knowles experience in 1988, there have been many anonymous reports of mysterious lights hovering over the Null Arbor Plain. But so far, no one since the Knowles family has been willing to come forward and tell their story publicly.